PMAC Movies back for another PMAC Movies reviews video. Um, I would say I used to only do these only maybe once a month or so. But the good thing is you're probably going to be getting more of these. Um, reason being is, I think I talked about this in my live stream, but I got a, I, I bought a few notebooks real cheap from Staples. So now I have... Um, you know, just movie reviews notebooks. So I'll take each page and kind of write my thoughts on the movie. Um, and uh, so I have I have two TVs that I watch movies on. You know, one in the bedroom, one in the living room. So so that I don't um, slack off and don't do it because it's like. And so say I only have one notebook, and sometimes it'll be. Um, in the bedroom and sometimes in the living room. Oh, I don't feel like going to get it. I'll do it tomorrow. So rather than do that, I have a notebook for the bedroom and the living room here. And I just write kind of a, a little outline for what I want to talk about for each movie. Some of my thoughts from the movies. Um, but anyway, I do appreciate you guys for for checking this out a uh, fair amount of you know if you take a look at my reviews videos versus my haul videos a lot of people just come for the hauls so if you actually watch these review videos and stick them out i mean you are really a true pmac movies fan you really care about pmac movies you care about my thoughts you care about my opinions um and i really do appreciate that um and that's why I do, you know, share kind of outside the box stuff, because although it's probably going to give me less viewers, um, it's going to get people leaving the channel because, you know, a, a lot of people on YouTube or whatever, they're trying to grow their their subscriber base and their fan base. They don't want to share any opinions or um, any thoughts that are going to lose them people. They don't want to offend anybody. However, my take on it is kind of like I actually want people to kind of care about, um, you know, I want to form more relationships with people where they actually kind of get to know me and hopefully I can get to know some of you guys like I already have. And that forms maybe less relationships, but closer relationships. Um, so rather than, you know, I feel like I could probably have a lot more fans if I just kind of stuck to, you know, what gets people coming, like the, you know, the the haul videos and making the channel more pretty and things like that. But um, I prefer to put more um, thought into it rather than making it look better and, 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 and trying to grow the channel with, um, you know, kind of... Uh, What's the word? I, you know, I'm, I don't even think about what I'm going to say in these and then I just start talking and I can't think of the words. But, you know, you know, you got shallow content versus content where there's more thought and opinion and, and, um, and, and things like that put into it. Um, I, I don't really want the shallowness of it all, which may end up getting more more people. I want more thought-provoking stuff, more, you know, actually putting my my head into it, my thoughts into it, my my critical thinking into it, which turns a lot of people off. Um, and I do appreciate it, though, when people disagree with me, but they do it in, like, a manner where we can kind of go back and forth and discuss it. So... That's kind of that's kind of like what life is. Like you're not going to be able to have relationships with people where you agree about everything. But if you can have that dialogue where you can go back and forth and you feel like even though this person disagrees with me, they do respect my opinion, that can form really strong relationships too. Whereas if you're talking to someone and they're, you know, judging you in a harsh way or like, you're just nuts or you're crazy. Why do you think that? You know, that sort of thing. You know, that's, that's a stupid, you're, you know, you're, you're, um, you know, just judging the way you think, throwing out terms like conspiracy theorist and stuff like that. It's just, you know, the name calling, the judging, you know, um, that's, that's what you get a lot of times if you, if you think outside the box. But, you know, even if you disagree, um, 
if you do it in a manner that's respectful, that is appreciated. But um, I don't know. I don't know where I, I could I could probably talk about that for quite a while. But this is a movies review video, and the thing is, I'll get into kind of patterns where I get into a TV show or whatever, and I don't really feel like watching movies. And I'll get into patterns where I don't really feel like watching TV shows and I'll get into just watching movies. I've watched quite a few movies recently because um, it's only been like 10 or 11 days since I made a reviews video. And I have a lot of movies here that I that I picked out that I haven't talked about yet. So I think I've just watched these over the past 10 days or so, um, something like that. So there's quite a few movies here. Um... There is a stack where I didn't have these notebooks yet, so I didn't write anything down. So we'll kind of also see the difference between ones where I'm just kind of thinking out of thin air of what I thought about the movie versus ones where I have a little bit of outline. I You know, I wrote down my thoughts e either during or after the movie, um, and I can kind of talk about those things. And th this might be something where I should actually maybe break it up into a couple videos, but... Um, We'll see how it goes. Uh, I probably won't. I, you know, some of these movies I won't talk very long about. But there are some really, really good movies in here. There's some movies where I really, really liked them. There's some movies I thought were kind of, you know, mediocre. And then there's a few that I didn't think were that great. But for the most part, there wasn't, I mean, there wasn't really anything terrible in here, I don't think. So let's take a look at uh, at the ones that I watched recently. First, we'll take a look at the stack where I wasn't writing my thoughts down. So we'll take a look at these. First, from uh, Vinegar Syndrome, we have a movie called Olivia. And, you know, I haven't watched too many Vinegar Syndrome movies, especially before this past sale. And you hear a lot of things where the movies are kind of trashy and, uh, you know, grindhousey, not necessarily very good. For this Olivia movie, it's another one where I was kind of surprised by it because I thought there was some very interesting psychological elements to the movie. Um, I expected Olivia's character to be like kind of sleazy and kind of, you know, whorish and kind of things like that. But she's actually very, um, the actress who played Olivia, she's very like innocent looking. She's a very innocent looking woman. And it wasn't like she was just messed up and it doesn't, like, give you a reason for it. She's just, like, going around murdering people or, like, she's, like, a hooker who's just, like, killing um, the men paying for her services. She's actually, you know, it gives kind of a, it gives a background on what happened to her to cause her to be the way that she is. And um, it actually kind of takes a look at, her relationships in this movie and, and kind of, um, you know, her relationships with these, these men, including her husband and, uh, you know, what happens with him and, and, uh, kind of the, why she is the way that she is. And, um, so it was more of a, a psychological movie than I expected it to be. It wasn't just a trashy kind of thing. Um, so I appreciate that part of it. My ratings a lot are based on entertainment value, how entertaining I thought that the movie was. And by the way, this is from 1981. It's 85 minutes. Um, and I also like to talk about do I think that the movie's worth owning or not. So I thought that the movie was pretty solid. I would probably give it a 3 out of 5. Nothing that I thought was was great. And, I you know, I do have good things to say about it. Um as I already have, I just don't know if it's one that I really feel like I need to have in my collection. I don't know if it really stood out enough amongst other movies. Um, the depth of the story, while there was more depth than I was necessarily expecting, it didn't really go um, beyond a certain point like it was it was still fair a fairly shallow movie i thought very like surface level psychological components to it so i didn't think it was great um 
I don't really feel like it's worth like needing in my collection. So like I don't, the, the slipcover version might be out of print now. So I might sell this and, and uh, make a little profit or something. I don't really feel like it's one that I need in my collection. Although it was a, a pretty decent movie. So that's Olivia there. Not bad, but not great. Um, another movie here. This is, a, you know, a different type of movie. Remains of the Day here. On Blu-ray, I have the UK version put out by Sony. This is 134 minutes. The movie's from 1993. This is a region-free one. There's also um, US versions of this put out by both Twilight Time and I believe Sony has a US one also. The slipcover on this one's pretty nice. Um, you know, this is a movie that is set in a, uh, you know, kind of like a down, Downton Abbey environment where you got the butler in this, um, you know, mansion sort of thing in England. Um, the owner who's played, I don't even know who plays him at first, but Christopher Reeve's character ends up being the owner after the original owner. Not the original, but after the, the original one in this movie passes away. And, and Anthony Hopkins plays the butler. Um, Emma Thompson plays the, uh, I don't know, what is she considered to be? Like the maid or like the head maid or whatever whatever she's called. Housekeeper. The head housekeeper. Um, I felt like Emma Thompson stood out in this movie. Her her acting skills. I thought she was really endearing in this in this movie and the in the role that she has. I, I thought she was very impressive. Anthony Hopkins, on the other hand, I'm sure you know he he this was considered a very good performance by him and everything like that. However, I don't know. I just you know I I just see him as like Hannibal Lecter in this movie, and it's totally not who his character is. But just the looks he gives, and you know, he looks like the. This movie was probably made around the same time as he did the. The Silence of the Lamb movie, and I just couldn't get that out of my head. Like he's just. He's just like such a creepy presence, and. His character in this movie is kind of a. Uh, he's so focused on his work, like that's, all he shows that he cares about. And the movie is a lot about the relationship between Anthony Hopkins' character and Emma Thompson's character. Anthony Hopkins' character is frustrating um, because you can tell that he cares about Emma Thompson's character and you can tell that she wants him to show it, but he just won't. And it's frustrating. It's a frustrating experience. It's, it's something where it you don't get the satisfying ending or the, the satisfaction through this movie where there's some sort of resolution that you want, that you're waiting for um, in this movie. I mean, that's kind of how life is, too. Like, you, you may want a certain thing, but it doesn't end up working out for you. It, it, you don't... Life isn't a lot of times like movies where you get, like, that satisfying ending. So as far as realism this movie is solid but it just doesn't you don't get the satisfaction in this movie that you're looking for um anthony hopkins character you're hoping for him to to progress through the movie and to come to some sort of realization and to make the necessary changes and all that stuff but it just doesn't quite happen. So you just end up frustrated. So I didn't really like this movie. Um, I was engaged in it throughout, I'll say that. But as far as like entertainment value and, and just getting what you want of out of the movie, I felt frustrated by the end of it. So it's a good movie. It probably does what it sets out to do. But if you're looking for an entertaining good time, this is not the movie for you. I would give it a 3 out of 5. And... Um, Jeez, I feel, just in talking about the movie, I feel a little bit frustrated. It's like, I don't know. It's a good movie, but it just doesn't, it doesn't go for it. And it doesn't want to go for it. It does what it wants to do. Um, and not every movie is going to be satisfying. You're not going to get a happy ending 
at the end of every movie, but it just felt especially frustrating with that particular movie. Um, up next, this is a low-budget horror movie, and it is called Absentia. I believe that's how they pronounce it, something like that. Um, this movie, I believe this was actually set in Glendale, California, where I stayed for a little while. Directed my, by Mike Flanagan, who directed, um, what's it called, the... Uh, I always, Dr. Sleep, you know, the Shining sequel, which is excellent. And for the budget that this movie had, this was also very, very good. Um, obviously, they didn't have the budget to really do excellent special effects. The cast is a bunch of people that I had never seen or heard of before. I don't think I wrote anything down. I don't think I was working the notebooks yet when I watched this, no. Unfortunately not, but uh, while this was worth watching, it wasn't something where it was like great. You could definitely feel like the low budget nature of it. Um, this is one where I, I wish I wrote some things down after I watched it because I think there could be some, some deeper stuff to it that I could have wrote down. Um, it's basically... Um, a couple sisters, the one sister who is now pregnant, uh, I believe older sister, she had lost her husband and she's actually pregnant from like the detective who is on the case. The younger sister comes to stay with her. She has a past history of, of substance abuse issues and, and kind of just a history that isn't uh, very, very good. So the cops kind of Things happen and the cops kind of look down upon her because they see her as, you know, as a drug addict and, and somebody who's had issues in the past. So some of this, the, the psychological stuff and some of the stuff that she's claiming is going on, um, they don't really trust her because of her history. Um, this is another movie where you're not really going to get a happy ending. It, it's a dark movie. Um definitely some dark psychological aspects to it and, and uh, it's kind of a monster movie too um, I think a lot of horror movies use the monster aspect and things like that as a metaphor for psychological trauma there's a lot of things there's a lot of um, aspects of this movie with substance abuse and people not taking care of their priorities and, and not taking care of their loved ones because they do go down that route, that deep, dark route. But as far as that goes, this movie, um, rather than using that as a metaphor, it goes down more of a literal path with the monsters, the monster aspect of this. So I thought that this was actually like a really good movie for what they had to work with. And I think it really showed the talent of Mike Flanagan, um, who wrote, directed edited this movie, 91 Minutes, from 2010. So I was I was pretty impressed by this movie, and I was, I was really engaged by the psychological nature of it um, and the way that it could use no-name actors, actors who were hardly in anything else. Um, just the way that it kind of structured the movie and the way that it got you to care about the characters and, and things like that in the movie. So that's about as deep as I'm going to go with this one. I would give it a three and a half out of five. Really solid one if you can find that for cheap. I think I found that one at a pawn shop. Um, it is a phase four films one that, you know, you find at Dollar Trees and stuff like that. But who knows if you're going to. You know, the more I'm doing here, the more I'm seeing, this is probably going to be a, a one where I make a, a haul video, or not a haul video, but a, a reviews video today, and then maybe make one t tomorrow also because I'm off from work. So I'm probably just going to do the stack today of uh, movies that I've watched that I didn't write down anything for, and then tomorrow or Wednesday or something I'll do the ones where I wrote down things for because I'm, I'm feeling it already like all the talking and thinking about what I want to say and thinking about these movies up next we have a Kino one which was a really enjoyable movie called The Day of the Dolphin 
from 1973, 104 minutes, starring, um, what's his face here, George C. Scott, who I really like. Um, pretty unique movie. You don't see too many movies that I know of about dolphins and their talking dolphins. So George C. Scott's character is, uh, like a scientist who works with these dolphins. He's, he's funded by this, this entity, this group of, of men. Um, he's funded for his work with these dolphins and there appears to be this agency or this government worker or something that, uh, he's up to no good. He wants to kind of, it seems like he wants to kind of come in and, and I don't know if kidnap the dolphins that are talking or what. He's trying to figure out what they're doing exactly. And they don't want him to know because they don't want their research to be messed up. They don't want, you know, there to be these dolphins taking away from them and, and doing testing on these dolphins who are, they're working with on, on speaking, English, basically, you know, um, and this is a really, it's a, it's a drama, but it's a thriller, and it's, it's actually a really enjoyable movie. I really like what they did with it. This is one which I, I paid 10 bucks from the Kino sale. If you can get it for 10 bucks or less, definitely grab this. If you like 70s movies, you know, George C. Scott, good, um, kind of a unique thriller this is one that you should definitely seek out and there's a really good twist in this movie that i really did not see coming i really enjoyed the twist in this movie um it says that this is a brand new 4k restoration i didn't have any issues with the picture quality or anything like that i thought this was a really excellent excellent one i really like the reverse artwork this is the if you go online to buy the movie this is the artwork that you'll see but i really like this artwork which is the reverse artwork i give this a really strong recommendation i really enjoy this one charmaine also enjoyed this one um it might even be a decent family movie possibly i mean it's rated pg i don't remember anything where it was like um any like intense sexual stuff or anything like that there is you know violence and stuff but overall you know i thought for certain age groups and stuff, I thought I think that this could be a decent uh, family movie. Um, says on the back, it's a sci-fi thriller. It's a really good one, a really really solid one. Um, I would give this four stars out of five. I need to come up with something cool, like some sort of special PMAC movies rating system. Um, I think I probably shouldn't come up with anything now because it'll probably be stupid. But I'm going to have to think on that one. But that was a really, really strong one. And I'm just kind of coming up with the ratings on these as we go. Um, you know, Day of the Dolphin, probably pretty close to a four and a half. But as far as entertainment value, I'd probably go with like more of a four out of five, taking everything into consideration. Now, this one is one that kind of caught me off guard because it didn't, I don't think it really, like, I, I read pretty mixed things about it, and um, I went into it expecting that it would be, like, entertaining, but not that great. And it is The Legacy here, put out by Scream Factory in the U.S. It has a better version from Indicator in the U.K. Um, I got the, if I had to choose, I would probably choose the Indicator version, even though it would cost a few more bucks. But I got this for like 10 bucks, so I'm happy with that too. And um, I feel like I've watched this kind of movie before. It's a it's kind of movie where you know, you know, th there's these characters played by Catherine Ross and Sam Elliott. They're going to a different country to do some sort of work for people. And they end up at this house, and you know there's something weird going on with the people that are that are staying there. It's very obvious something's up. So I feel like I've seen that kind of movie before, but I thought that the execution of this was excellent. I thought that the end result, you know, the, uh, what was, you know, the twist or what was actually going on there, I thought it was, was a really cool one, a really interesting one. Um, definitely like occult components of this, um, 
this is one where if I wasn't kind of feeling it from already talking about the other movies and also my stomach's growling quite a bit, I feel like I could get more into this movie, so it's one that I might talk about in like another reviews video, but I feel like if you don't have this one, this is an excellent one to get if you can get it for, you know, 15 bucks or less. It's a really, really good Scream Factory movie to get. Now, part of what I like about it, too, is it has a strong male and female lead, but, you know, it's got Sam Elliott, it's got a strong male presence, so you know that he's in danger, but you're also kind of feeling confidence from from him, and, and I really like Catherine Ross in this, too, which I looked into it a little bit after, and I believe Sam Elliott and Catherine Ross have been married for some time, so that's pretty cool. This movie's from 1978, it's 100 Minutes, um, I don't want to go too much into what the end result of this is, but I felt like the conclusion, the ending was really fulfilling and I don't feel like it's, you could have a debate with people really if it's a, if it's a happy ending or a sad ending or not, not necessarily sad, but, uh, more of a, a negative ending. Um, I, I thought the ending was really cool too, how they did it. And um, I would give this a 5 out of 5. PMAC Movies, classic status, the legacy here on Blu-ray. Fantastic. I just wish, I w I'm getting a little bit shaky again because I drank coffee and I'm getting hungry and it's just, it's not a good combination to keep going here. But I think we're coming up to a few movies where I'm not going to say a whole lot about. I don't. I just don't have a ton to say about them. Um, this is from an Asylum box set, which I received from Peter over in the UK. Um, you know, every time I... And I said this when he was still alive, too, that these movies that I got from him, anytime I see them or I watch one of them, I'm, I'm really always going to be thinking of him. Um, and that's definitely the case. Um, you know, I didn't know him long, you know, we emailed back and forth for a little while. He sent me movies. He sent me, you know, pictures of, of his family and his house. And, um, you know, I just, it was, it's tough because there was no like closure to our relationship. Like it was just like he, I think he ended up going to a nursing home briefly at the end and he passed away. And I, I, uh, you know, I messaged his wife a little bit, but she, you know, obviously she had other things to attend to, so she didn't really um, keep going back and forth. She moved on, and but uh, this is one of the movies I got from him, and th this was a solid one. I enjoyed it. It wasn't anything that I was really into. Um, kind of, you know, uh, an interesting, haunting movie kind of a haunting and kind of a, um, the one aspect of this that I want to talk about is kind of like, do we carry our family lineage, our family history, the wrong that our family has done? Do we kind of carry that with us? Um, it's kind of an interesting aspect to kind of take a look at, which this movie does take a look at. And I thought it was a good movie, nothing like really fantastic or great, but I thought it was um, you know, for this type of movie, um, I thought it was solid. I, I like the way that, um, the, like the British horror type of movies, I tend to like those, especially from the 70s. You got Peter Cushing in this. Um, it's from 1973, 91 Minutes. This was put out by, by Severin. Um, so I really enjoyed this one. And I would give it a three and a half out of five. Um, I enjoyed it, but not to the depth of like some of this other stuff that I'm showing here. Uh, like, you know, the legacy was great. And some of the ones I'm going to be talking about here, probably in tomorrow's video, uh, I like quite a bit more than that one. This one I thought was, again, decent for, you know, it, it's, it did what it set out to do. Um, don't be afraid of the dark. This is the original one. The, this was like a TV movie. And it was good for a TV movie. Uh, not a whole lot of depth to it. It's only 74 minutes. 
So again, I thought that this one was really solid. It did what it set out to do. Definitely a creepy little movie. Um, I didn't think it was real scary, but more like kind of a creepy, creepy elements to it. Um, the, the newer one with Guy Pierce, it had more of like a, you know, it had a, a young girl in it. So it may, I think it made it creepier because it had like the young kid in it where this is more so focused on the, um, the woman. But uh, I would give this like a three out of five. So I thought it was good, but it wasn't like totally up my alley necessarily. I'm getting shaky here. I got to get through these. Uh, Wuthering Heights, this is a Twilight Time. Um, I was engaged throughout the movie, and um, I thought it was a it was a good movie as far as storytelling, but the characters in it just aren't very likable. I, I, think, um, I think Timothy Dalton's a really good actor, and he has a really good like presence about him. His character wasn't likable, and it wasn't like the actor's fault. It's just kind of the way the movie was. The characters in this, I just thought, were all like, very unlikable um i thought i think that the story would be more entertaining and more powerful if some of the characters were actually people that you kind of cared for but um i felt like some of them were in the position to be but they just ended up not being likable at all so um another an interesting ending to this one too i don't want to get too far into it but um you know, the the two main characters. Uh, again, somewhat debatable if it's a happy ending for them or a sad ending. So, um, but one that's, this is not like an uplifting movie. It's like a drama. It's kind of dark and depressing and, and uh, just not a movie I'd necessarily recommend watching at all. Quite frankly, there's so many movies out there. Um, if you want to be depressed, watch... Wuthering Heights because you're sure to be depressed after. But it was it was a, a good movie as far as storytelling and things, so I'd give that one like a three out of five. Um, up next, I'm not going to talk about this much. It's Wonder Woman, Wonder w Wonder Women. Nice slippy dippy there. Um, this is kind of a fun grindhousey type movie in the Philippines. It's nothing great. Um, somewhat entertaining. Not really up my alley, not necessarily, I think, anything that I need to keep. Um, it's fun, but, you know, kind of a throwaway movie. I, I, I don't need to have this in my collection. I'd give it like a two and a half out of five. Up next, we have a, I feel like maybe I already talked about this one. The Lift, directed by Dick Moss. He also directed Amsterdam, which is another Blue Underground one. This one is 99 Minutes from 1983. It has the same lead as Abster as Amsterdam have has a uh, Hoob staple Stapel. I don't know. It's basically the, you know this lift that's kind of terrorizing and killing people um, at this hotel. I think it was a hotel, and uh, Hoob staple is the lift operator, like the lift mechanic. Um, so he, he knows that something, something weird is going on here with this lift. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I didn't think it was that great, really. I mean, it was good for a movie about, a, like, an evil lift, or like a lift that's killing people. You know, for that kind of premise, it was good. But it wasn't, it wasn't really that great. You know, he, this mechanic guy kind of plays detective to figure out what's going on with this lift. Um, so that was kind of intriguing to some degree, but overall just, it, it wasn't a movie that really drew me in very much. So I don't know if I really need to keep that one. Um, it wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't like great. I would give it a three out of five again. And then a movie, this is the last one I'm going to show here. Cause I'm literally like shaking. I think, you know, I drink, I drink a cup of coffee and I'm just kind of like shaky. Um, but it is Murphy's Law here starring Charles Bronson. This, I tend to like Charles Bronson movies, and this one is another solid one. I would give this a solid four out of five, really good action movie with, 
you know, Charles Bronson's character has some excellent lines in this, and he's just got like a bravado, a confidence about him. And I think that the Bronson and then this girl who ends up kind of being his, his sidekick in this, is she Carrie Snodgrass maybe is, is the, the girl here. You know, she's got an attitude about her. And Charles Bronson's character has an attitude also. And you can kind of tell that they're kind of mean and nasty to each other, but they're they're fond of each other, you know, in a way. It's just the, kind of their way of expressing it. They both are kind of you know, tough demeanors and they, you know, they just play this back and forth thing. So that, that relationship's the main thing in this movie. But basically there's, there's some murderings happen, people getting killed. Charles Bronson's character gets framed for it. And, um, you know, it's this woman who's, who's, uh, behind this stuff and you're just kind of figuring out like, wh what, why is she doing this? What's her role in it? This, this woman who's going around murdering people. Um, so I, I thought that this was a good one, directed by J. Lee Thompson from 1986, 100 Minutes. And, uh, you know, if this is from Twilight Time, if this is one that you got during the sale, you really got a good deal. You might still be able to get this from Screen Archive for like 15 bucks. And if you can, I would recommend that you do because it is a, a really good movie, definitely. If you like action movies, if you like Charles Bronson movies, if you like, you know, especially 80s action movies, I thought it had a pretty good story. That, Like I said, the main part of this was kind of the the interaction between Charles Bronson's character and this, and this chick here. So I thought that it was a really, really entertaining one. Um, and I recommend it. P-Max, tell me he's hungry. My tummy's been growling, like, for half of this video or more. Um, so I still do have a stack, and I'm probably going to watch more today. Um, this is the stack of ones that I have written things down for, so I'm going to make a separate video with those. Hope you enjoyed. If you enjoy PMAC movies, check out the description section for ways that you can help out the channel. If you made it to the end of this video, if you watch these reviews videos, um, you are one of the the big PMAC movies fans, and I do appreciate it. And you are also probably the people who comment, thumbs up, and all those things, which I really do appreciate. You know, I take the time and effort to put forth these videos because I want some of the, you know, interaction and things like that. You know, there's no other real point in making these. Um, I ain't getting rich off this shit. So I appreciate you sticking around and caring about PMAC. It, it's... It is nice. Um, and, you know, I still wouldn't, I wouldn't still be doing these videos if it wasn't for people who communicate and, and, and show that they care about the channel, you know. Um, so that those things are all appreciated. And PMAC needs to eat some leftover chicken drumsticks and maybe a few vegetables. So uh, we'll see you next time on PMAC Movies.